Agreement. So good morning po sa bawat isa. Salamat po sa sa Panginoon sa kanya pong kadakilaan, sa kanya pong biyaya ngayong umaga na pinagkaloob po sa atin. Amen, amen. So this morning po mga kapatid, let's go on ahead sa atin po and welcome again sa bawat isa na kasama po natin ngayon. So we're joined now with Brother Pastor Jonathan Ratonil. Sabi niya, good morning evangelists and all saints. Another day to study sound and true biblical doctrine. We're also joined with Brother Ricky and Brother Eliseo is now watching with us ngayong umaga. Okay po mga kapatid. So last time we leave off dito po sa God's plan through the ages po mga kapatid. And um, uh, we we intend doon po sa survey po mga kapatid and we look at sa sa pinakaumpisa no. We look at sa pinakaumpisa ng ating pong discussion. So maglagay po ako dito ng ano po mga kapatid ng ng isang So ito yung umpisa ng timeline. So ito yung umpisa ng time. So ibig sabihin itong portion na ito is before time po mga kapatid. Kita natin. Itong portion na ito ay before time. So we we discuss from eternity past. So this is before the foundation of the world, okay? This is eternity. Ang tawag po ng place na ito ay eternity. Okay? So Um, in eternity, okay, before any anyone else or before the foundation of the world, itong part na ito, before God created anything, before God, ano po mga kapatid, before there was anything made that was made, before the mountain were brought forth, before there was ever yet a world or or, or angels or or whatever creature po mga kapatid, in the beginning, God it was always there, okay? It's always been, it's always been there. And in the beginning, God. Amen. So, lahat po nag-uumpisa, pat kahit sa kahit sa dispensations at lahat dapat ibabalik po natin nag-uumpisa po tayo doon, no? So, in in eternity past and uh, nandiyan na po he's always been there po mga kapatid. So, and before the foundation of the world and God is is there po. Nakikita po natin at um of course because our God is eternal, our God is everlasting, our God is Uh, the King Eternal po mga kapatid, that's why. And uh, before anything else, and bago po natin pag-usapan, we have to understand these things. That in eternity, we discussed also last time po mga kapatid, that in eternity, that God was not idle, the Godhead, the Trinity was not idle. When we say God, God, we talk about the, the, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three were one. Are one. So ano, pong, ano po ang... Ano po, ang tanong ganito, bago pa nagkaroon, nung sila palang tatlo, okay, bago pa nagkaroon po ng other creature, ano pang ginagawa nila sa eternity? Of course, meron tayong glimpses sa Bible na magikita kung anong ginagawa nila sa eternity po mga kapatid. So magikita po natin that uh, they have eternal fellowship between the person of the Trinity. They have that eternal fellowship. We discussed that last time that, of course, uh, magikita natin that In John 1.1 pa lang, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. The Word was with God and the Word was God. The same in the beginning with God. So they are together na po mga kapatid. Actually, they are, they are uh, ano po, self-sufficient. Hindi naman, hindi naman nila actually kailangan tayo eh. Because they are self-existent and they are self-sufficient. So walang nag-create sa kanila. At uh, kahit wala ang iba, mabubuhay sila at maglalast po sila. So, yun po ang Panginoon. But uh, so b- before lahat they have eternal fellowship between the Godhead and nakita po natin sa Proverbs chapter number 8 yung how they delight each other daily that was before anything else po mga kapatid. Amen. So there we see that there was this eternal love between the person of the Trinity. There was this eternal love, not only eternal fellowship, they have also eternal love between the persons of Trinity and Jesus Christ even said Uh, sabi niya doon, uh, the Father has loved him before the foundation of the world. So before anything else, the Father already loved him. So there was that mutual love and eternal love between the person of the Godhead. And there was this also eternal mutual glory. There was that eternal mutual glory. So makita natin sa John 17.5 that the Father glorified the Son and the Son glorified the Father. So Do you see that? That's before the world was. Before there was ever yet a world. They glorified each other po mga kapatid. So makikita niyo po yun. So very clear. And that lastly po mga kapatid, 
may kita din natin that they are making plans for the eternal purposes of God. So bago po ang lahat po mga kapatid, they were making plans for the eternal purposes ng Panginoon. So uh, may kita po natin that uh, of course Jesus Christ is he is the alpha. So pero bago ang lahat po mga kapatid, they were making plans for the eternal purposes of God. So is the alpha, siya po yung pinakaumpisa at wala na pong iba po mga kapatid na may kita po natin. No? So Uh, with that regard also po, I'd like you to notice, like to observe po mga kapatid, that they're making plans for the eternal purpose. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians 3.11, and meron pong eternal purpose ang Panginoon, which He purposed in Christ Jesus. So that is to say, the God is the Creator, and He is also a wise, the only wise God, that before He does anything, or before He do anything po mga kapatid, or ginagawa niya iba, bawat isa po, or anything na, na kanyang nilikha, ay of course, lahat ito ay nakaplano. So we visited last time yung three, ay five terms, hierarchy of terms. Sa Ephesians chapter number one is yung, yung purpose, yung pleasure, yung will, remember? Counsel and work. So bago po nagkaroon ng work, it undergoes from God's purpose to God's pleasure then God's will, God's counsel, then work, creation. So pag sinabi po ng Bible, in the beginning, God. So sa Diyos muna, so part done that God is doing something so perfect, so marvelous because of the counsel. That is the ability of God, the capacity of God to do things. That is the, the, the counsel of His own will. That's God's wisdom in, in performing things. So, We we look at that last time, then nagkaroon po ng work. In Ephesians 1.11, according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will. Lahat po ito ay after the counsel of His own will. Purpose of Him who worketh all things. So, so God is the one who work all things based on His purpose, pleasure, will, and counsel. And we have a great work, a good work. That's why makikita mo even sa sa Genesis creation account that and God saw that it was good and seven times po mga kapatid or six times and God saw that it was good God saw it was good God saw it was good ang pangpito po the seven is and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good so yun po no behold it was very good so that is a declaration po mga kapatid kung sino ang Diyos and he make all things beautiful he make all things perfect po mga kapatid at lahat and wonderfully and and fearfully made po mga kapatid lahat ng ng creature because it's based on his purpose pleasure will and counsel so what you see here in the timeline later on po mga kapatid as we progress what will we see in the timeline as we as we progress po mga kapatid para magkaroon magkaroon lang tayo ng point of reference atin po tong isusulat no para magkaroon lang tayo ng point of reference Lalagyan natin dito ng cross, okay? Para lang magkaroon tayo ng point of reference. Pero i-discuss natin yan mamaya. Ay, I mean, some other day. Layo pa natin. Dito pa tayo sa eternity past. Eh. So, let's look at the eternity past po mga kapatid. Okay? Um, dito pa tayo. So, madami pa tayong pag-usapan po mga kapatid. So, ano yung mga ginagawa ng Panginoon? Ano yung plano niya? Ano yung eternal purpose ng Panginoon? We discuss also yung eternal purpose ng Panginoon. So, meron po sa Bible po mga kapatid that was nakatago, eternal purpose of God, which He purposed in Christ Jesus. At uh, ito po yung eternal purpose na ito. It's concerning sa eternal life. We talk about na, na bago po siya nagbibigay ng eternal life dito, nagpaplano, na, nakaplano na. Naka, ang tawag po natin na term sa panahon po na ito is conception. Okay? God was conceiving all things. He, was, he conceived all things bago po ito nagiging creation. Bago po ito naging nilalang. So nagkaroon po ng uh, conceptions. Kinonceive muna ng Panginoon sa kanya sariling puso, sa kanya sarili, by himself. At lahat ng ito. That uh, in, before the world began, before the, there was ever a world po mga kapatid, there is already that God already conceived na meron pong eternal life. Okay, dito pa lang, no? Wala pa bago pa nagkaroon ng tao na mayroon ng eternal life ibibigay ang Panginoon. 
So ano sabi po ng Bible po mga kapatid? In hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. So there was before the world began, God already is uh, con conceiving in his mind about that eternal life. That this eternal life can be given through Christ po mga kapatid. So because God is all-knowing, God omni is omniscient po mga kapatid. So God foreknow, okay? For knowledge ng Panginoon, alam ng Panginoon po mga kapatid kung kung ano po ang kung ano po ang mangyayari lahat so uh, alam niya nakikita niya na ang kas may kasalanan na papasok may kasalanan magruin na bago po ang lahat ng nangyayari alam ng Panginoon that's why he designed everything po mga kapatid na although inalaw po ng Panginoon na may papasok ang kasalanan pero gumawa din siya ng paraan kung paano po mag-get rid ang kasalanan na yon so nagbigay siya ng mga plano. So para bang para bang isang engineer po mga kapatid na gumawa ng plano just in case meron pong meron pong alam tawag yung blueprint, gumawa na ng Panginoon ng blueprint ang lahat na along with that blueprint may mga emergencies just for in emergency cases. What if magsunog? So gagawa siya ng fire exit. What if may ganito? Gagawa siya na. So may kasama na po ba? Provided na po lahat po mga kapatid. Because our God is the only wise God. So this is the thing when he conceived things And eternal life is already, ano po mga kapatid, nakikita natin sa Titus 1 verses 2 to 3 po mga kapatid, na ngayon lang na gano, that there will be a dispensation of grace, okay? Dispensation of grace po mga kapatid, na may dispensation of, of grace, okay? Na may, may panahon na, na ang kanyang biyaya ay ipupour out lahat, that's Ephesians chapter 2 verse 3. This is the subject of the mystery po mga kapatid na magkaroon ng dispensation of the grace of God. Ano pa? Na magkaroon din ng one body. Magkaroon ng one body or yung church po mga kapatid, yung body of Christ. Magkaroon din ng one body or yung church na body of Christ po mga kapatid. So makikita po natin. So nakakonceive na po ng Panginoon yan. If makikita po natin sa Ephesians chapter number 5, ay uh, 3, Verses 5 to 6, ito po yung, ito po yung ano po, eternal purpose ng Panginoon. So kung, kung titingnan mo yung context ng Ephesians chapter number 3, basahin mo all the way to chapter 11, uh, verse 11 at ang context ay sinasabi na lahat ng ito, even the mystery, truth na hidden that was not made known is part of the eternal purpose. So pag sinabi natin eternal purpose, dito pa lang ay nakahanda na po yun, nakadesign na ng Panginoon. So it's just a matter in time kung kailan i-apply ng Panginoon or i-execute ng Panginoon ang kanyang mga naplano or na-conceive na, na po mga kapatid. At bago po yun, lahat ng ito ay naka-anchor dito. Okay, nakasalalay dito. Kaya ibig sabihin, lahat ng eternal purpose which He purpose in Christ Jesus. So He purpose in Christ Jesus. So hindi to ma-overtaken. So ibig sabihin, may cross na din dito naka nakaano po mga kapatid titingnan natin yan mamaya so uh, the indwelling Christ so merong that one day okay indwelling meron pong indwelling Christ or the indwelling Christ na mangyayari so may, that God one day naka-design dito beforehand before anything else the before the world and it was not made known to many ages po mga kapatid that God would dwell with man So it is part ng kanya pong ano that God would no longer dwell in temples of stones but in men becomes as the temple of God. So nakaplano din is yung election in Christ. So meron ding election in Christ. So of course contrary sa mga contrary sa contrary sa mga mga Calvinistic na mga doktrina. So, ang ating election po, mga kapatid, we believe that there's election. The, the Bible talks about election. Pero, it's a matter of understanding kasi ang understanding nila, uh, elect na, uh, naka-elect na before before the world began kung sino maliligtas at naka-elect naka na kung sino ding pupunta sa damnation. That's very wrong. Ang election na pinakita po natin ay naka in Christ. So, ibig sabihin, Magkaroon lamang ng election within Christ. So, ibig sabihin na ang isang tao, dapat mo na siya ma-in Christ bago siya makakuha na ang maka-experience ng election. Kasi because this election is in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, God had chosen us, okay? Uh, in Him, okay? Before the foundation of the world. So, chosen us in Him. Not chosen us to Him. 
but chosen us in Him. So we have the, the believer, the sphere of this election is in Christ, being in Christ. So being in Christ means being saved, being part of the body of Christ. Dapat magiging part ka ng one body po na yon po mga kapatid. So we talk about that election at that, that God would, would talk of also, He planned also of what we call salvation. Okay, salvation without works. He's also talking of salvation without works. So nakaplano na din po yan po mga kapatid. Clear po yan sa 2 Timothy chapter number 1 verse number 9. Let's tingnan po natin. It's just a matter kung kailan in-execute, okay? In-execute ng Panginoon. Pero ang plano or ang, ang conception po nito, it was before the foundation of the world or before the world began. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter number 1, verse number 9 and 10. The Bible says, let me read po mga kapatid, verse 9. The Bible says in verse 9, Uh, who hath saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace. So, sabi niya that God saved us not according to our works, but according to His purpose and grace. So, this salvation is according to the purpose of God and grace of God. So, not according to works. So, walang trabaho. Which was given us where? In Christ. So, this salvation can only be obtained and can only be experienced in Christ, which was given us in Christ before the world began. So before God made world for, for His creature, po, mga kapatid, that is already have been contemplated in the mind of God, that He will be providing salvation without works. Pero ang tanong, kailan po yun na-execute? Kailan po yun na 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 execute or na fulfill ng Panginoon or ginampanan ng Panginoon na ito ay makas maikasatuparan okay hirap magtagalog kaya maikasa maikas su ha oh, basta ma-fulfill or ma mangyayari po mga kapatid so uh, and look at verse 10 but is now made manifest it was planned then but it was made manifest here kailan po nagma-manifest but is now made manifest. Kaya pansinin niyo talaga yung dispensational now. Ito po does determine the now in Christ. Okay, ito yung now in Christ. Kung saan po ang panahon po natin po mga kabatid, ito yung portion after the cross or diyan sa ang determinant is yung cross yung now na yon in Christ po mga kabatid. So ibig sabihin may past. We're talking not just of the past but we're talking of the eternity past. So, kailan po na plan ang salvation without works? Dito po sa eternity past. Pero kailan na nag-manifest, na-execute, but is now made manifest by the appearing, okay, by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who had abolished death and had brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. So, kailan po yun? Kailan po nag-manifest si Kristo para i-abolish yung death po mga kapatid? Ay dito nung pumunta po siya sa cross ng Calvary. At isa pang clue sa verse 10, uh, to light through the gospel. So, you see that? This is always the focal point. This is always the point of reference. So, ito yung basis kasi dito po, dito po nagkaroon po na pwede na ang anyone na ma-in Christ, dapat ma-execute muna ito bago magkaroon ng somebody to be in Christ po mga kapatid. So another thing na na discuss po natin not only salvation without works. So ano po tingin mo nakaplano dito na kailan natupad dito po. Nakita niyo po? Ito lahat nakaplano ang one body. One body may may eternal life na. Tingnan, tingnan po natin ang eternal life. Kailan po na naikasatuparan na yung eternal life na yon? Let's look at Titus chapter number Titus chapter number 1. Okay, babasahin ko ha Titus 1 verse number 2. In hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began, but hath in due time, hath in due times, so may may eternal life promised before the world began. So there's eternal life before anything else, before the world. It was in eternity past. At sabi dito, but hath in due times manifested His word through preaching, which is committed unto me. According to the commandment of God, our Savior Jesus Christ. So the the plan of eternal life was in eternity past, 
But the manifestation of the eternal life was after the cross. And most especially po mga kabatid, when he called Paul, because it was manifest in due time, the eternal life which was planned, manifested through preaching. So paano natin alaman na may eternal life? Through preaching. And who was first commissioned to preach on eternal life for the Gentiles? I'm talking of eternal life for the Gentiles. Sino po? Which is committed unto me, sabi ni Paul, according to my according to the commandment of God, our Savior, po mga kapatid. So it was committed to Him. So nakikita niyo po, there was a plan. Then it was executed, po mga kapatid, ng lahat ng ito. So kailan po nagkaroon? Kailan po na plan itong one body po na ito, po mga kapatid? Or itong one body na ito? Kailan po siya? Or itong dispensation of the grace na yan? Kailan po yun? Nakontemplate kasi ito under siya ng mystery. Kailan po yun? Nakatago lang yun sa Panginoon. Tingnan po natin, Ephesians chapter number 3. And gusto ko lang i-emphasize po yung part po na yan para hindi natin ma-miss. Kasi dito natin maintindihan ang rightly dividing na tayo, hindi tayo aksidente. Ang sabi nila, the, tama in one view, in one point, in one area. Pag sabihin mo na napunta ang gospel sa Gentiles dahil po nireject ng Hudyo. Ang tanong, what if daw kung hindi ni-reject ng Hudyo, so wala bang body of Christ? Ang tawag is may eternal purpose na sa viewpoint ng tao, o oh, di magkaroon ng kingdom diretso, pero alam ng Panginoon na hindi lang tayo, hindi lang tayo aksidente, or ang tawag, ang, ang body of Christ, or ang panahon po natin po mga pted, yung church age, ay hindi po siya fall back ng Panginoon. Are you listening? It is not a fall back, but rather, it was part of God's design who is all the only wise God, the all-knowing God, that who already purposed everything in Christ Jesus before the world began po, mga kapatid, ang lahat ng mga bagay na ito, it's just, is it kind of to paran po, mga kapatid, lahat ng mga bagay po na ito. So it's just a matter of ano po, the execution. Pero hindi tayo oksidente na inserted lang tayo. Although parenthetika lang ating part, pero walang nakakita sa panahon natin, and that is true, walang sinumang propeta at sinumang mga tao in the Old Testament or even in the earthly ministry of Christ po mga kabatid na pinakita itong plano na ito okay alam ni Kristo siya yung siya yung author nito eh pero hindi po niya inannounce kasi may appointed person po siya na mag-announce that there will be an age which we call dispensation of grace or there will be a that a new creature which will be called the church the body of Christ mga kapatid that one body at ang, ang in-appoint na tao dyan na mag-announce, si Apostle Paul, in which we're going to learn as we go on ahead in this series po, mga kapatid. So, yun po, no? So, makikita po natin na hindi po siya inserted, but no, plano lang. Uh, Nagpina-progress, hindi lang sinabi ng Panginoon na may ganun. Kasi ang tawag po dito is unsearchable riches of Christ. But tingnan po natin. So, ang context po, ang dispensation of the grace of God, makikita mo sa verse number, Two, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, sabi dito, and which is given me to you, Lord. So, ano to? How that by revelation He made known unto me the mystery. So, pa sa papaanong paraan nalaman ni Paul na magkaroon ng dispensation of the grace of God? God made it known unto him the mystery. So, God made it known unto Paul the mystery. Ano tong mystery nito? Whereby, when I, when I, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. So this mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known. Nakita nyo po, which in other ages was not made known. So there was already an existing truth, but still it's a mystery in other ages, like the Old Testament, po mga kapatid, or since the world began, po mga kapatid, it was not made known. It was not revealed. But it was revealed to Paul. Po, nakikita natin. He made known unto me the mystery. So it was revealed to Paul. Isa po doon sa mystery na pinag-usapon po natin, ito pong dispensation of the grace of God, which in other ages was not made known. Ano po ang ano po ang laman ng mystery na ito? Not only the dispensation of the grace of God, verse number six, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of His promise in Christ Jesus by the gospel. So this is concerning the plan of God for the Gentiles, that the Gentiles will once were strangers, 
once were not a people of God, but the Gentiles can be now part of the promises of God and can be now part of the eternal purpose of God. Amen. Into that one body. So that's the, ano po, by the gospel. Sa pamamagitan ng Ibanghelyo, na nagiging kasama tayo sa plano ng Panginoon sa pamamagitan ni Kristo po, mga kapatid. The promise in Christ. So where is this promise? Again, in Christ. So not outside Christ po, mga kapatid. You have to uh, emphasize that and intindihin po natin yan. So ano pa? So ano pang description nito po, mga kapatid, ng, ng, ng mystery po na ito? Like na-mention natin, dispensation of the grace of God at itong one body na ito, verse 7. Where of I was made a minister. So sinong minister? Si Paul. According to the gift of the grace of God, which is a gift of God given unto me by the effectual working of His power. Verse 8, unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given. So binigay sa kanya, although ang consideration niya sa sarili niya, he is less than the least of all saints. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. At the same time, itong mga eternal, ano po mga kapatid na ito, eternal purpose of God na ito, these are also considered as the unsearchable, okay, unsearchable riches of Christ. So they're called as unsearchable. So ibig sabihin, the, the description itself is unsearchable because before God made this known, before God revealed this, this was unsearchable. You could not search eternal life, okay, ng ng mga mga gentiles apart dito po nung ni-reveal na kay Paul wala hindi mo mahanap ang dispensation of the grace of God or prof prophecy about the dispensation of the grace of God dito po sa Old Testament hindi mo din mahanap ang prophecy or truths about the body of Christ or the one body in the Old Testament that hindi mo din mahanap ang truths na ito that God will will uh, that, that 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 the believers body will become the the tabernacle of God or the indwelling of Christ which become the hope of glory and Christ in you the hope of glory because this is part of the mystery which was not made known and the election in grace uh, in Christ po mga kapatid dito makikita po natin hindi mo din mahanap na may tinatawag ng election in Christ yes may makikita kang election dito sa Old Testament but that's the election of the nation of Israel but not the election in Christ but tandaan po natin ha there's an election here Dito, there is a Christological election. That means si Jesus Christ ang elect. Tinatawag po siya sa Isaiah that He is the elect. He is the chosen. And meron ding national election na makikita mo sa bansang Israel. At meron ding mga vocational election na kikita mo sa Old Testament. But one thing you cannot see is the election in Christ. And that chosen in Him, election in Christ, is, is a, a solely a Pauline doctrine po mga kapatid that it was only first revealed na may ganun pala sa time ni Paul po mga kapatid. Pero dito, it was not made known. It was considered as unsearchable. Okay? Considered as unsearchable po mga kapatid na dapat ating tingnan. And another thing pa pa mga kapatid ay makikita po natin that not only unsearchable riches of Christ, ang that was first unsearchable. Look at verse number verse number uh, 5, which in other ages was not made known. In verse number 9, it is considered as unsearchable. I verse 8, in searchable riches. But in verse 9, it is now God's intention, it is now God's purpose to make it known. Look at what the Bible says in verse 9. And to make all men see, and to make all men see, what is the fellowship of the mystery? So it is now God's intention to make what was first unsearchable, what was first not made known, and God wanting now that every man should see what is the fellowship of this mystery. Okay, that's why in verse 5, which in other ages was not made known as it is now revealed. So in other ages, it was not made known. But here, it was revealed. It is now. So the time timing natin, the now po mga kapatid, in Christ, as it is now revealed by His holy, ano po mga kapatid, uh, it is now revealed unto His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So these are New Testament prophets. These are New Testament apostles po mga kapatid. So it was kept secret. It was still unsearchable. But it was made known. 
Now, look at that. Which from the beginning of the world, take note, had been hid in God. So, nung nagsimula ang mundo, it's hid. It's still hid. Although it, 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 it manifested here, but the plan was here in eternity past. But when the world started, it was not made known. Nakita niyo po, when the world started, it was not made known. That's why the Bible says, which in the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. So, nakita niyo po mga kapatid. So, there, this is the plan, but it manifested here. Lahat po nito, itong dispensation of the grace of God, one body, dwelling, lection, lahat po yun, dito po yun ang punta. But the plan, the purpose, the conception was before the world began. Okay? So, not only salvation without works, mga kapatid, but also po mga kapatid, the hidden wisdom of the cross. So, we talk about the hidden, the wisdom, the hidden wisdom of the cross. Oh, nandito pala ang cross po mga kapatid. Plano pala. So, habang dito na-execute, pero ang cross po, nakaplano na yan dito. Nandito na yan before the world began. Amen. It was executed here. Why this is the center, the focal point. Ito yung pinaka-crucial. And God has to hide these things. Bakit kailangan itago ng Panginoon ang mga bagay na ito po mga kapatid? Because later on, nalalaman natin ang reason bakit kailangan itago ng Diyos or ikikip secret po niya ang mga bagay na ito. So titingnan po natin ito mamaya. So ano ang description? These are not only unsearchable riches, these are the mystery of Christ. So the mystery of Christ. So these are the mystery truth. Anong description ng mystery of Christ? <coughs> it was not made known. Okay, it was hid in verse number 9. <coughs> it was unsearchable in verse 8. Amen. But ngayon, gusto nang malaman ng Panginoon. Ano pa? Not only it was hid, it was unsearchable, it was made known. Let's look at Colossians Colossians chapter number uh, 1. Look at the Bible. And the Bible says in Colossians 1, ano pa ang description with regards to this mystery po mga kapatid? Okay, verse number 25. Uh, verse 26 na lang. Even the mystery sa verse 25 para makita natin ang context na si Paul ang ginawang minister po nito. Whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations but is now made manifest. So, ano ang description ng mystery? Which had been hid from ages and from generations. Kanina, anong, anong difference nito? Hid from? Ano po, ano po ang description? Hid. Pero dalawa pong klaseng, dalawang way na pagtago ng Panginoon, one is hid in God, okay? Yung una is hid in God. Ito, hid from ages and generations. So anong difference po mga kapatid? Of course, tinago sa ages and generations. Dito sa panahon na ito, itong mystery po na ito, at been hid dito po. Pero pag sinabi mong hid in God from the beginning of the world, ibig sabihin po mga kapatid, it's hid in where? In the mind of God and in the heart of God. At wala pong makakaalam po niyan po mga kapatid, kung, un, not until sasabihin ng Panginoon. Not unless kung all-knowing ka. Okay, maybe, for example, I have, I have contemplated something in my mind and my heart. But you have no way to know it because you are not all-knowing. Only God can. So not until I am going to say it, then you will know. Po mga kapatid. Then you will know. So ang description po niya, na napaka, this is sacredly hidden, itong mga, mga truths po na ito, itong including from eternal life to the cross po mga kapatid, I'm talking of the, the hidden wisdom of the cross. Ha? I'm, not, I'm not talking about the suffering of Christ. You see, pinaprophesy yun eh. I'm talking of the hidden wisdom of the cross na na. The other side of the cross ay may kapangyarihan po yun mga kapatid na hindi alam ng jablo, hindi alam ng sinuman. Yun yung mystery doon. So, but, balik tayo. Um, pag sinabing he did God, ay nasa, nasa Diyos lang yun. Not until God will purpose to reveal it, walang makakalam noon. 
Okay? So, ganun ka sacred, ganun ka katago po mga kapatid. Ka ka hidden itong ano na ito. So, bibigyan natin ng description kung gaano katago po ito mga kapatid. So, hid from ages and from generations. Okay? So, let, let's look at uh, Romans chapter number 16. This mystery of Christ or concerning the the preaching of Jesus Christ which is according to the revelation of the mystery. Romans 16. The Bible says in verse number 25, and very famous, very common passage para sa ating lahat. The Bible says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and, and the preaching of Jesus Christ. You look at the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. So, kasi there are two preachings about the Lord Jesus Christ. The preaching of Christ according to prophecies. And the preaching of Christ according to the mystery. Okay? According to the mystery. So, magkaiba po yun mga kapatid. Hindi mo pwedeng i-join. Kasi yung according to prophecy, na detailed po yun ang patungkol kay Kristo from His from his birth mga kapatid hanggang sa kanyang pag, pagkamatay. Detalye po yun. At hanggang sa kanyang pagbabalik. At mayroon tayong hundreds of prophecies in the Bible concerning about that. So it's not actually hidden. It's not actually secret. But it was it was spoken since the world began by the mouths of the prophets. Po mga kapatid, makikita po natin. Pero itong preaching of Jesus Christ, this is different from what was prophesied by the mouths of the prophets. But this was hidden from the prophets. This was the eternal purpose of God about kay Kristo po mga kapatid, the other side of the preaching of Christ, which is according to the revelation of the mystery. Anong, 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 ano po ang description? The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery, which was kept secret, kept secret since the world began. So, the, these things mga kapatid, not only unsearchable, it was what? Kept secret. So nung nag-umpisa po ang mundo po mga kapatid, it remains in the mind of God. He did not tell anybody to Adam, to to Noah, to Abraham, to Moses, to David, to any to any ano po mga kapatid, he did not share this knowledge to any of the faithful and godly men in a spiritual men in the Old Testament or in other ages. He kept it secret po mga kapatid, but but uh, he ordained one man to whom these things will be revealed and that is the apostle Paul in which we are going to learn all of these things later on po mga kapatid uh, because ito mga bagay na ito ay para dito po mga kapatid it was kept secret but ngayon hindi na sikreto sabi din verse 26 but now is made manifest so clear na po no nagma-manifest na po sa ngayon hindi na po ito secret secreto pero dito it was kept secret So makikita po natin. So since the world began or before the foundation of the world because it had been hid in God. So with that po mga kapatid, makikita po natin that this God's eternal purpose which He purposed in Christ, Jesus is kept secret, okay, before the world began. Or it, it remains a mystery. It was hidden. Although it was, it was well planned and conceived before the foundation of the world, But when everything was created and when the time started and when the world started, God hide this eternal purpose. Okay? God hide this eternal purpose. Okay? Now, sa panahon natin, God hide this eternal purpose here. But now, sa panahon natin, made manifest. Ito po yung mga pa... Ang Amen. Ano po, mga kapatid? Ito po yung mga term na ginamit. Made manifest. Manifest. It was made known. Okay? Amen. And revealed. Okay? Ito po. So ito po yung mga ginagamit ng Bible. It is now, as it is now revealed, as it is now made manifest, mga kapatid. So it's very critical to understand this, that it was never appeared. It never appeared here because it remained hidden in the mind of God. And hidden from this age and from generation, it was a secret from this age and generation. It was unsearchable from this age and generation. Itong mystery of Christ, which contains the eternal purpose of God. Balikan natin ang Ephesians chapter number 
Ephesians chapter number 3. Kung ipagpatuloy po natin yung sa verse number 9, to make all men see, ito na yon make all men see. Ito na po, make all men see. So ito na ang intention ng Panginoon sa panahon natin. Gusto na dati, tinago ng Panginoon, gusto na ngayon ng Panginoon na ipakita yung kanya pong, kanya pong masterpiece, ang kanya pong wonderful, perfect plan na kinonceive po niya before the world began. In verse number 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So these things might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So, hindi lang sa mga tao niya ipinapaalam, but unto the principalities and power, okay, made known po mga kapatid, unto the principalities and power might be known by the church. So, malaman nila sa pamamagitan ng church. So, we are, we are the stewards of this mystery that we are not just teaching men about this mystery of Christ as the, the church, the body of Christ, but we are also ministering to the principalities and powers in the heavenly places. So, it's not just limited to men, but it, is also, it, it, it also includes the scope among angels and every creature po mga kapatid in heavenly places. So ganun po kalawak, ganun po ka ganun po ka uh, great itong ano po na ito, itong itong doktrina po ng mystery of Christ kaya ang tinago po ng Panginoon. So anong tawag ng mystery of Christ na ito? According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus. So ano pala to mga mystery na ito? Part lang pala po ng eternal, okay? Part ng eternal purpose where in Christ this is the eternal purpose of God in Christ so lahat ng ito dito po eternal before time began before time started this is already conceived and this is what we call the eternal purpose which we now the known the mystery of Christ which at the first unsearchable hid it was kept secret po mga kapatid And, and marami pang description po mga kapatid that, that I, that no princes have known, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither enter into the hearts of men the things that God prepared for them that love Him. So dapat maintindihan natin, but although it was, it was, it was formulated or uh, designed or conceived here, it was kept secret here, but now made manifest here. And guess what? You live in this day and time now. This is our dispensation. This is our time. This is well, with the body of Christ, mga kapatid, is the instrumentality or the stewards to make these things known, po mga kapatid. So praise, praise the Lord for that. Now, my question is, why? Okay, bakit? Why kept secret? Na, na, have you, have you, ano po? Have you asked yourself bakit po kin kinep secret? Why kept secret itong mga bagay na ito? Bakit tinago ng Panginoon? Bakit hindi niya pinaalam nila David, nila nila Adam, nila Noah, nila Abraham, nila Moses at yung mga mga prominent prophets? Why is so? The reason is in the Bible and we know that reason. Let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. And this is a, an explicit reason or a very clear reason na binigay ng, ng if he, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 na sinabi ni Paul, bakit he kept it secret? Verse number, let me start with verse number 6. Sabi ni Paul, How be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. So Paul was speaking of wisdom of God. Because bago ka papasok sa verse number 6, he mentioned many times the word wisdom already in chapter number 1 and in verse number 2, uh, in chapter number 2 also. But this wisdom is 
make clear distinction that there, there there is this wisdom of this world or the wisdom of men, the wisdom of words, but this this one is the wisdom of God na tinutukoy po natin. But look at verse 7, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. And we're talking about here that that Paul was speaking the wisdom of God in a mystery. And what is this wisdom? Even the hidden wisdom. So ano pala tong eternal purpose, mga kabatid, ng Panginoon? This is also called as the hidden wisdom. Or the mystery is also called as the hidden wisdom. Sa Ephesians chapter number 3 po, verse number 10, it is called as the manifold wisdom. Manifold wisdom of God. Okay? And it is considered as the hidden wisdom. So, bakit hidden wisdom? Pero kailan na-ordain itong hidden wisdom? These are the hidden wisdom of God. Itong nakalista po natin dito po, mga kapatid. And this represents the few or the many. It represents the many. Kaunti lang po ito, pero it represents the many. If you study po, halos po yung mga minireveal ng, pa, ng Panginoon kay Paul na hindi nakasulat sa Old Testament is part po ng, part po ng mystery of Christ po na ito po, mga kapatid. So kung makikita po natin ay uh, ito po ay hidden wisdom or ang mystery kinutukoy, ito yung tinutukoy niya, yung eternal life, dispensation of the grace of God, and the list goes on. And verse number 7, how but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So this, kailan po ito na-ordain? Itong hidden wisdom na ito? The Bible is very clear. Before the world. Okay? This was ordained before the world. Itong hidden wisdom na ito was ordained before the world. If this is the start of the world po mga kabatid, and this is before the world. This is in eternity past. Okay? It was conceived here po mga kabatid na magkikita natin. But this was ordained before the world para kaninong glory? Unto our glory. So para kanino, sino ang recipient po ito? Unto our glory. Sino our ang tinutukoy? He's not talking of the nation of Israel, but he's talking of the body of saints. He's talking of the saved now in this dispensation. This, this hidden wisdom was prepared for the glory of this age. Dito po sa mga tao na maging in Christ po mga kapatid, or mas save po mga kapatid. At dito po, para ito sa glory, para dito po, that's why, naintindihan na natin, which is now made manifest, now made known, now revealed, now God intended to make all men see po mga kapatid. Lahat ng ito. Because it was intended for this group of people here, and rightfully so, kung wala naman palang kinalaman ang bansang Israel sa eternal purpose of God in Christ Jesus, eh rightfully so, hindi nila kailangan malaman dito. Since ito ay para dito, then tama lang na i-reveal dito po, mga kabatid. Kuha niyo po? Amen. Tama lang na i-reveal sa panahon po natin ang mga bagay po na ito. So which was ordained before the world, wow, unto our glory. So, you see, hindi yun aksidente. Okay? Now, verse number, hindi din, hindi din plan B ng Panginoon. Okay po? Hindi din fall back ng Panginoon just in case magkamali po ang Israel. May, may back up ako. No, no. But it's part of the eternal purpose ng Panginoon. Now look at verse number 8. Itong hidden wisdom which none of the princes of this world knew. Pag sinabi mong princes of this world, these are men of authority. Men kung saan who have access of wisdom. We're talking of kings and queens and princes. And princess, amen, who has access. Na, remember, ang mga kings, meron yung mga counselors, meron yung mga wise men and mga learned men sa kanila. Ibig sabihin, they have their own intelligence and they have access. But sabi po ng Bible, gaano ka sacredly hidden po itong mga bagay na ito, but which none of the princes of this world knew. Then I'll tell you this, isa sa sinong kilala mong prince? is the prince of this world, the prince of the power of the air, the god of this world. Sino? Including Satan. Even Satan don't know about this eternal purpose of God. 
wala siyang idea idea po dito po mga kapatid dahil tinago po yun ng Dios in it is in his mind it is a hid in him hid in god so walang sinumang tao sinumang ka, may, may idea or may may hint not even the slightest hint po mga kapatid ang nakakaalam na including the devil which is called that satan is called as wiser than daniel po mga kapatid but none of the princes of this world knew including the prince of the power of the air including the prince of this world which is the devil he did not know about this he knew about many things about israel but he never knew about the body of christ he never knew about mga kapatid about the eternal purpose of God. He knew a lot of things about Israel. That's why, kasi sumusunod sila sa scripture, bawat prophecy, sinubaybayan po ng jablo. At purposely, pinapalam, dineclare ng Panginoon openly na malaman ng jablo ko anong plano niya sa bansang Israel. But he has one plan po, mga kabatid, that he never share it to anybody. Not until in the fullness of the time must come. Not until ma-execute yung isa sa at ma-execute yung reason kung bakit ay ma-execute yung yung pinaka reason kung bakit ma maisakatuparan ang lahat ng ng mga bagay na ito ng kanyang eternal purpose at saan po look at which none of the princes of this world knew why what's the reason what is god's divine intention why he kept it secret For had they known it, for had they known it, so ano result kung nalaman ng ng jablo? Ano magiging impact kung nalaman po ng mga tao dito at ng mga enemies ng panginoon? Ang wisdom nito, ang hidden wisdom or ang mystery nito or ang ang eternal purpose of God nito. In Christ Jesus, ano man yaya yari? Kung nalaman nila nito, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of Glory. Right. Ako patay. Yun po ang pinakas kreto. Maintindihan mo na ngayon dapat. Dito na natin malaman. Ah, kaya palatinago ng Panginoon. Bakit? Kasi ang ang power pala which God will will bring these things up. Okay? Or will rot these things. Ang kapangyarihan pala ay manggagaling sa death, burial, resurrection ni Kristo. Kasi kung nalaman lang ng jablo na sa pamamagitan pala ng pagpako ng Panginoong Hesus or pagpatay sa Panginoong Hesus, ito ay maisa katuparan. He will not. Ah, sabi niya, oh, hands off ako dyan. Bakit? The devil is not a fool in a sense na hindi siya nag-isip. Wicked lang ang kanyang mind. Pero po mga kapatid, matalino, tuso ang jablo. Kung, and he will be committing spiritual suicide kung nag-alam lang niya po mga kabatid, kung sinabi ng Panginoon na kung ipako niyo anak ko, merong body of Christ at itong death ko mag-defeat sa inyo. Kung, <laughs> sabi nito, oh, bakit ko ba gagawin yan? Of course, dahil wala siyang inkling, wala siyang hint, wala siyang any idea about that. Amen. He led, okay, This uh, ano po call for crucifixion, and he used Israel and the Romans to crucify the Lord of Glory. But had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of Glory. So yun po ang importante. Kaya po mga kapatid, intindihan yun ngayon. Bakit hindi po ito maisakatuparan dito? Not until mangyayari to. Bakit? Dahil sa cross po kumukuha ng kapangyarihan na walang eternal life kung wala ang ito na walang dispensation of the grace of God kung wala ito wala pong one body 
kung wala ito. Wala pong indwelling of Christ kung wala ito. Wala pong election in Christ kung wala ito. Wala pong salvation by grace without work. Salvation without works kung wala ito. Naintindihan nyo ba? Na, na point out ba lahat po mga kapatid? Nakita nyo ba yung significance? At ito po na enjoy, wala po tayo, wala pong, can you imagine, wala tayo kung wala ito. So dito, ito yung wisdom of God. Remember, the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness, but to us, which are saved. Amen. It is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Amen. So it is the wisdom of God. It is now the hidden wisdom of God. And had they known it, yun po mangyari. They, Satan could have prevented the cross to happen and he will do all the means kahit gano'n sa kagalit. Basta wag lang kasi kung alam lang niya, yun ang magtalo sa kanya. Sino bang, sino bang tao ang gagawa ng gano'n po mga kapatid? Wala. And uh, praise God. Dito din natin makita na yung wisdom ng Panginoon. Now, habang, habang yun ay nanatiling mystery, look at verse 9. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of men the things which God had prepared for them that love Him. So may binanda ang Panginoon, the things which God prepared. Kailan po yun? Before the world began. But not until, amen, the cross was executed. No eyes can see, no ears can hear, no heart can perceive or understand. Lahat ng ito. And God kept it in Himself. But he knew also po mga kapatid that he is going to what? He's going to select an apostle. He ordained, he knew a man that he's going to reveal all these things. And ito po si Apostle Paul po mga kapatid. Kita nyo po sa Galatians chapter number 1. Tingnan nyo po sa Galatians 1. He's ordained of God. Siya yung pinili ng Panginoon na magiging ano po dito. Look at Galatians 1. The Bible says po, mga kapatid, in Galatians 1, verse 15, nasabi po ng Bible, But when it pleased God, so this is part of the pleasure of God. Remember yung hierarchy? Pleasure. Purpose, pleasure. But look at this. But when it pleased God, sino ba si Paul? Ano lang ba si Paul? Sa pagkatao niya? But look at verse, this is now the vocational election. Vocational election. But when it pleased God who separated me from my mother's womb, wow, and called me by His grace to reveal His Son in me that I might preach Him among the heathen, and immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. So He was chosen vessel. He was a chosen vessel. He was a sanctified one by God to bear this, to preach the the unsearchable riches of Christ, to reveal Christ, to reveal His Son in me, that I might preach Him, I might preach Christ among the heathen. Amen. And immediately I conferred not with flesh and blood. Kanino siya nakakonfer? Or nakakonference, nakareceive ng mga, ng revelation na ito? I conferred not with flesh and blood. Not from flesh and blood. Ibig sabihin, he conferred not, it's not coming from men, it's not coming from anyone, but it's coming from God. Look at verse number 17. Neither went I up to Jerusalem. It's not coming from the apostles, from the twelve apostles, which were apostles before me, but I went into Arabia and returned again unto Damascus. Saan siya nirevealan po ito? It was not in Jerusalem. But God revealed all these things in Arabia. So ano pong punto po mga kapatid na gusto kong may kita po natin? So he also, he also prepare a man in a perfect time to whom become a chosen vessel. Let's look at Acts chapter 9. Paul is that chosen vessel. He is that minister that God called to preach among the heathen the unsearchable riches of Christ. Look at Acts 9, the Bible says, mga kapatid, in verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, kay Ananias, sabi niya, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. Woo! He is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings 
and the children of Israel. So Paul is that chosen vessel. It was not accidentally po, that he purposely so that God could demonstrate how gracious he is, how what how the grace of God will work and operate. Amen. So that he could show to men what is long suffering and what is mercy and what is grace. God chosen and saved amen the chiefest sinners amen the chiefest sinner the least of all saints po mga kabatid, and are not even worthy to be called an apostle so that we will to demonstrate and we will understand mga kabatid, that even in the worst kind of person that even a murderer even a blasphemer even an injurious person po mga kabatid, that there is no sin that his grace could not abound that there is no iniquity or 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 ano po mga kabadet, transgression that he could not pardon and forgive po mga kabadet. it is to demonstrate that's why look at second timothy or first timothy chapter number first timothy chapter number 1 kaya i remember that song always na nakanta po natin po mga kabadet, namin one time that, that the part of the lyrics is I don't know what a sinner you are, but I know what a Savior He is. Do you see that? This is God demonstrating through the vilest offender, and that is the Apostle Paul. Look at verse number. Look at verse number um, uh, twelve. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me. For that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer, a persecutor, an injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly and in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord Jesus was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Then this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Do you see that? He is the chief. But look at what's the purpose of God. Even the chiefest sinner could be saved by the wonderful grace of God. Verse number 16 is the purpose of God. How be it for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first. In me first, Jesus Christ might show forth all long suffering. You'll understand how long suffering God is. God demonstrated it by saving the soul of Tarsus to show forth his long suffering. And what is the purpose? For a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him in life. Believe on him to life everlasting. You see, who is Paul? He was made a pattern to those who will believe. Amen. That's why I can be saved. You can be saved if God can save Paul. Amen. And he revealed to Paul many, many, ano po mga kapatid, truths. He was that chosen vessel. At dito maintindihan po natin. So part po ng eternal purpose, you could not question that. That is part of God's wisdom. That He chosen a, a, the chiefest sinner to become a pattern. And not only to become a pattern, but to become a minister, a preacher, an apostle for the truth of God, of the mystery of God po mga kapatid, na makikita po natin. Glory to God for that. Amen. So, you see, going back dito po sa 1 Corinthians chapter 2, had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So, the point mga kapatid is this. Para bang, para, I don't know kung mahilig kayo sa chess. Dati mahilig ako sa chess. Ngayon, tinatamad na ako mag chess. Hindi ko na alam kung paano maglaro din eh. But of course, nanunood na lang, ganun, pero na-enjoy pa rin. Kasi mental ano po siya po mga kapatid, game, exhausting din. Meron tayong mga magagaling mag-chess dito sa, sa church. And um, enjoyable at minsan kapapanood din ng mga tournaments, ganun. But uh, isa po doon mga kapatid na yung ang isang, ang isang chess player, makikita po natin na in his mind po mga kapatid, nakaporma na ang lahat ng moves niya. 
isang magaling isang chess master or grandmaster po mga kabatid na tingin pa lang sa positioning, marami na siyang option sa kanyang mind, marami na siyang mga choices na gagawin. Ito yung direction, ito yung ganun, ganun po mga kapatid. Pero hindi niya yun sinasabi. And he will sometimes sacrifice, sometimes seemingly na natatalo siya, pero he can sacrifice yung iba, pero ang end point niya, manalo siya. Yung goal niya. It seems na tagilid siya. Sometimes i-exchange niya yung kanyang mga high officials, i-sacrifice niya over sa mga kalaban pero ang ang end point pala nito ay para ma-checkmate or manalo siya. You know, nangyayari po mga kapatid, siguro ang hindi maintindihan ng Jablo yung kanyang kan, ang wisdom ng Panginoon nung dumating ang Panginoong Hesus. Because may hatred siya doon po sa sa Panginoong Hesus because it was the seed, ito yung seed na sinasabi ng Panginoon that will bruise my head doon sa if uh, sa Genesis 3:15. Na ito na yon sabi ng Jablo, it's my time na unahan ko na to Siguro ang isip ng Jablo, bakit kaya binigay ito ng Panginoon? Bakit kaya inano to niya? Wala naman akong nakikita. So very limited lang ang kanyang ano. Hindi naman siya, hindi naman siya ano po mga kapatid. Parang pinain ng Panginoon ang Son of God. Parang ano, ano kaya to Parang isang chess player po mga kapatid na biglang pinain niya ang kanyang queen. Sa harapan ng, sa harapan ng ano, sa harapan ng pawn or other na mga na mga lower na ano po mga kapatid rank than the queen tapos tiningnan ng tiningnan ng chess player tiningnan ko wala naman ako nakikita ditong violation kung kakainin ko to kung wala so wala to it's my time ah, baka na, nakaligtaan lang niya so ganun ang mentality tapos sabay kain bang ang hindi niya alam that there was three moves ahead four moves ahead it will be his doom. Na yun yung key point. Ganun ang nangyari, nakikita ko dito eh. That God, when He moved the peace, that Jesus Christ will be surrendered to become a sacrifice po mga kapatid. Hindi nakita ng Jablo ng ganito, ng ganyan. So, ang nakita ng Jablo na ang, ang, ang Son of God ay ma- mag-suffer. Pero for the sins of His people. Ang ginawa ng Jablo, He manipulated Israel that Israel will be the one to call for His crucifixion. So, ma- matalino ang Jablo, no? Sige, I, I will not commit that but I will let his people para para God will be angry to his people and he will judge his people so he let the Israel he moved Israel to call for his resurrection I, to call for his crucifixion. Pero may other side kasi ang Panginoon na hindi sinabi sa Old Testament. Na hindi niya nakita, hindi niya na anticipate na sa mind lang ng Panginoon nung pagkuha po niya sa cross. Bang! Doon siya nahuli. Checkmate. Pero hindi pa niya alam yun. Siguro nag, nag-hudyaka ang Jablo. Woo! Wala na. Wala na kayong chance Israel na demak Israel. But not until someone came and said that there is that the cross of Christ. Look at Colossians chapter number 3. There's someone na nag-preach that Colossians chapter number 3 The Bible says in verse number, Colossians 2, in verse number 13, a verse number 14 na lang, blotting out the unwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to His cross. So the context is the cross of Christ. Verse 15, And having spoiled principalities and power, He made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Then there's this one man preaching that it was the cross. Amen. That God made himself openly. And he spoiled principalities and power, including the devil. And he triumphed over them in it. Sa cross. At now, gulantang ang jablo. What? Ano to? Ano pangyayari to? Of course, I'm just trying to think out, out loud po mga kapatid that meron po lang ganun. Kaya sa battlefield of the mind na atin pong discussion every Friday, that's the reason why Satan has the hatred against the mystery truth, against the mystery of Christ. He has hatred. Kasi the mystery of Christ will will reveal or will expose him that he is a defeated foe. 
will expose him na talunan na siya, wala na siya po mga kapatid, na victory na dahil sa cross po ng Panginoon. Kaya itatago niya, kaya ano, ano ang plataforma niya sa Ibanghelyo po mga kapatid, whom the God of this world will blind the minds, hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel would shine in their heart. So He will prevent that to happen po mga kapatid. Baka ang light ng glorious gospel ay will not shine. Would shine in the heart of others. So kaya po ganun. So checkmate na ang Jablo. And the eternal purpose of God ay na-reveal na. Pero wala pa tayo dun. In advance ko lang kayo. Nandito pa rin tayo po mga kapatid. Nagsapan po natin. Punto ko lang, nakaplano na dito. Pero pinorward lang natin in advance. It was kept secret here, but it was executed here sa power ng cross. Then mga kapatid, it was manifested after that, afterward po mga kapatid. When the Apostle Paul came to preach this message of the mystery. Kaya marami po mga so-called mga right divider even miss this mystery. Kaya hanggang ngayon po mga kapatid, they will insist on the the repeat after me prayer they will insist on on Romans chapter 9 10 and 11 and they will insist on the traditional soul winning scheme because they never knew about they they rejected hindi lahat ng nagta timeline right divider ha dapat ating intindihin hindi lahat ng nagta timeline ay real KJB believers daw so they may call themselves nang ganun po but you you mark that down po mga kapatid And that's why na miss po natin. That's why na miss din ng iba, na miss din ng iba na 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 bakit looking forward daw ang iba dito sa cross. Ang kaligtasan daw sa Old Testament at sa New Testament parehas lang daw si Kristo. Kasi na miss nila po mga kapatid na itong salvation without works ay hindi nalalaman at napapractice dito. Dito lang po yan na reveal. So kung alam mo po itong eternal security, itong salvation without works ay kept secret pa yan dito, hidden pa yan dito. There's no such thing as doctrine, salvation without works sa panahon po dito. Salvation without works through the finished work of Christ. Wala po ganun dito po mga kapatid. But we know it now because it was revealed here. Dapat maintindihan po natin. We know it now because it's revealed there. Okay po. So, napaka ano po natin dito. So, na nag-spend na naman ako ng two hours na tatrap naman tayo dito sa eternal purpose in Christ Jesus. Dito. But uh, worth worth studying, worth knowing, worth rejoicing po mga kapatid to see these things sa atin po ngayong, ngayong maga na ito mga kapatid. Okay, so sana hindi natin na-miss po yun. So let's move on to the next part po mga kapatid. We still have 15 minutes and maybe ma, ma, matatapos din natin. So, tapos na po tayo dito sa eternal purpose. So, ilagay po natin, no? It, itong palitan po natin itong mga bagay na ito. Okay? So, dito pa rin tayo. Dito pa rin tayo sa part na ito, no? Dito pa rin tayo sa part na ito. So, ang diniscuss natin kanina, yung eternal purpose. So, before the world began, nandun na yung eternal purpose ng Panginoon. Saan po naka-purpose? Saan naka-anchor ang purpose na kito? Naka-center ang purpose na ito? In Christ. The eternal purpose. So, yun po yung diniscuss natin ngayon lang. The eternal purpose of God po, mga kapatid. So, in this regard also po, mga kapatid, makikita na natin that uh, the Bible begins. So, in the beginning, God. Okay? In the beginning, God. So, what's the next word? Created. So, bago tayo pumunta sa creation, so, meron mo ng conception, mga kapatid, nangyayari din, creation. So, ang, ang cons- hindi po direct dumiret sa Panginoon sa pag-create. Na kinonceive mo niya yung lahat. Ito yung eternal purpose or what we call the conception ng eternal plans ng Panginoon. And also po, mga kapatid, um, in the beginning, God, the next word is created. So, this is now the time. And makikita po natin po, mga kapatid, that The Bible begins by telling us that God created the heaven and the earth. Now, we are now introduced po mga kapatid concerning heaven. In the beginning, God created the heaven and also the earth. Okay, the earth.
Okay? We're now introduced that God in the beginning created the heaven and the earth. So, I'd like you to note on that important term po mga kapatid that throughout, this, throughout the Bible, itong heaven and earth mga kapatid are always two distinct okay, realms. These are two distinct realms po mga kapatid na dapat nating pansinin that even in eternal state, even in eternal state, kasi bago pa ito nagkaroon po ng time eh, before time in eternal state po mga kapatid, God already created heaven and earth. He's not saying that He created the universe but He created the heaven and the earth po mga kapatid. Even in eternity past, there was distinction of heaven and earth. And even in the eternity future, later on po mga kapatid, as we go dito po sa future, there will be new heaven and new earth. So there is this is two separate realm or two separate uh, ano po sphere po mga kapatid ng kingdom of God. There are heavenly, the other one is earthly po mga kapatid. So makikita po natin and in clear po 'yon at uh, di po natin pwedeng pagsamahin po yung dalawa, magkakaiba po 'yon po mga kapatid. So God created all things in heaven and also in earth. So when he created heaven, he created he created the creatures also there and he created also creatures on earth po mga kapatid. I'm talking of before Adam. So he, God created all things in heaven and on earth by his son and for his son. Of course, ano pa ang purpose ng lahat ng ito? Jesus Christ created all things by him and for him. And these are created by the what? The pleasure of God. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. So we are now on this creation part of sa dalawa po mga kapatid. And it was designed by God that Jesus Christ is to be the only potentate, the King of kings, and the Lord of lords. That was the design of this, that there will be no other king, there will be no other king of kings and lord of lords, there will be no other potentate. And who will be the potentate of that, or the king, or the, the authority? Pag sinabi mong potent means power. Potentate is the one who holds the power and the, the authority po, mga kapatid. Second, second, uh, first Timothy chapter number 6, verse number 15, the Bible says po, mga kapatid, In chapter 6, verse 15 of 1 Timothy, and Jesus Christ, in verse 15, the Bible says, um, Which in his times he shall shew who is the blessed and only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. That means Jesus Christ should be over all his creation, both in heaven and in earth. And on earth, po mga kabatid. So makikita po natin that there should be no other that every knee should bow and every tongue should confess. Amen. Both in heaven, on earth, or under the earth, that Jesus Christ is the only Lord. And that's the design po mga kapatid. There, is, there should be only one God and one King and one Lord of glory. And that should be the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's the, in, the ultimate purpose of His creation, that He might be the only potentate, that He might be the blessed and the only potentate, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And all these things, amen, are made by Him. So by virtue of creation, automatic that He is the owner of all things because He is the, the source of all things, the origination of all things, and automatic The hierarchy is automatic. And what is that hierarchy? He is our creator and we are his creature and we are to bless him forevermore. That should be the hierarchy that is automatic. One way hierarchy, we have God above us. We're not equal with God. Amen. We should understand that, that we are not created for ourselves. We're not created for our own pleasure. We're not created for our own purpose and, and, and glory, but we're all created for Him. So the, creature, the Creator has all the rights, amen, for, about you and all the rights about me, po mga kapatid. Um, in, in, it's not my right, mga kapatid. I am even created twice. You are created by virtue of creation, sa, sa flesh, and I am also created in Christ. We are, we are a new creature created in Christ Jesus. Po mga kapatid. So, what else? What right do I have? 
Amen. How dare me magkiklaim po mga kapatid? So the purpose, we, we understand that Jesus Christ must be the king. He must be the only potentate. He must be the only Lord. That was the design perfectly from the beginning po mga kapatid. Therefore po mga kapatid, anything that he created was of him, owned by him, and existed merely to serve and please him. There is no other way. All things are created. It's for him, all things, mga kapatid, na makikita natin. Until such time po, mga kapatid, we will encounter a man, Lucifer. Because everything was perfect. Everything was in harmony. When God created the angels, the cherubims, the seraphims, this was before the human race. But there was a creature, one of God's creature, which is known as, we know now as Lucifer. He was, he was a, a, privileged, a privileged creature because God has given him a lofty and exalted position. But Lucifer as one of God's creature, did not submit to God's plan. What is the plan of God? That he is the only potentate. He is the only father. He's the only king and he's the only Lord. And that everything that was created, mga kapatid, that anything that was created and everything that was created is of him and owned by him and existed to serve him and please him, po mga kapatid. Ano nangyari po mga kapatid? Lucifer, as one of the creature, his purpose supposedly is for the pleasure of God and for the service of God. Amen. And he supposed, supposedly he is owned by God and he is under God because he is a creature. Regardless of his lofty position, regardless of his perfection, regardless of his beauty, but he is still a creature. He is still a creature, but he never submit to the plan of God. Amen. Lucifer was the anointed cherub that was his position that covered it. So he's an anointed cherub that covered it. Pag ibig mong sabihin, cover it. Anointed cherub that covered it. He is a guardian to the throne of God. Cover it. Pag sinabi mong anointed cherub that cover it. So he is, pag anointed po mga kapatid, that's, that speaks of a, a very special position. Ang, ano ang inanoint sa Bible? Yung mga priest, inanoint po. Yung mga kings, inanoint po. Yung mga prophets in anoint po. So that that is really a, a lofty position. So, but Lucifer, on the other hand, is an anointed cherub. Hindi lang siya basta bastang cherub, but he is an anointed cherub that covered. And his ministry was the guardian. He is the one that covering. Because the purpose of cherubs, mga kapatid, they are guardian. Remember, do you remember ano po mga kapatid? Do you remember the uh, the Garden of Eden when after po na pinalayas po ng Panginoon si Adam, Adam and Eve, anong, anong nilagay ng Panginoon doon? He put two cherubs with two flaming swords. Nagbabantay po doon sa, amen, doon po sa Garden of Eden na magkikita po natin. Nagbabantay po doon po mga kapatid. So, at magkikita mo dito, mayroon din doon sa langit, may cherub po doon na nandun lang sa throne room of God. Amen. And we see a cherub here that covered it also. The throne of God. And that is the devil po mga kapatid. And uh, he was created beautifully. You may you may refer this in Ezekiel 28 and, and, and Isaiah 14 that could help you in other passages po mga kapatid. He was covered with beautiful stones that reflected the glory of God. The topaz, the sapphire, the, lahat ng ito po, makikita mo sa Ezekiel 28 verse 13. Throughout the he it, it, it also reflects the glory of the heavens po mga kapatid. His position was higher than any other created being. Amen. He's a privileged class of creature. But he was never contented. He wanted more. He was never satisfied. Amen. He wanted to be like the most high God. So yun po ang problema po ni Lucifer. His, his pride had filled him with violence and he has this carnal mind po mga kapatid who declare enmity against God. And 
he has this desire an evil policy of the policy of evil in his heart po mga kapatid the five i wills in isaiah chapter number 14 i will sabi niya i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will ascend into the mount of the congregation i will sit in the mount of the congregation of the sides of the north sabi niya i will ascend above the heights of the clouds and the fifth i will is the i will be like the most high god so yun po ang kanyang desire sa kanyang puso he was never satisfied and he wanted more so we are introduced by this lucifer po mga kapatid and isa sa mga creature na was not, not satisfied at ang ambition po niya he wanted to be like the mosai although he is a creature but he has a bigger ambition and his ambition is he wanted also to be a god but uh, there is that specific title na sinabi he wanted to be like the most high god the most high god And of course, if you look at the Most High God in Genesis 14, verse 19 and 22, that's the first time na mention yung Most High God. And it was defined, the AV 1611 Bible defined that the Most High God, that it speaks of God being the possessor of heaven and earth. That is the title rendered to God as the possessor of heaven and earth. Satan wanted to possess the heaven and earth. And his pride caused his fall, and he became Satan. And you know, later on, he became the devil. I'm giving you a survey. Dito pa before Adam, there was this creature already. mga kapatid, who was placed on earth. Do you not know? Contrary to popular belief, by the way, he is the guardian of the garden of God or the throne of God on earth. Contrary to popular belief. Lucifer, okay, was not placed in heaven. Hindi po siya nakatira sa langit. In the beginning, and contrary to popular belief also, this this may shock the other if you don't know, and and you will rejoice if you know already know these things. But uh, let me say this. Guru explain ko yan sa sunod, kasi mahaba yan eh. Mag-usapan iba. Ang ang point ko lang survey. Bibigyan ko kayo in 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 this in a survey account kagaya ng ginagawa po natin po ngayon po mga kapatid. But uh, contrary to popular belief also, uh, Adam was not the first inhabitant on earth. He's not the first inhabitant on earth. There was, and Adam is not also the first creature. It's not the first race, but before Adam, long before Adam, there was a generation of angels and archangels and cherubims and seraphims or the heavenly beings. In the beginning, before time, before Adam, God created. That means finish na the heaven and the earth, and alongside with that heaven and earth, He put some creatures, po mga kapatid, one in heaven, and the other in on earth, and Lucifer. Was on earth, located on earth. He was a king there. He is the king. At ang tawag po sa kanya ay king, po mga kapatid. And king of Tyre, king of ano po mga kapatid. Makikita po natin. So may title siyang king, anointed jay. So he's a king. So that's why he said, "I will ascend into heaven." It's not. It's a foolish thing when you say na I will ascend into heaven if you are already in heaven. So he was not. He was not placed. In heaven, but he was he ascended in heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of the congregation in the side of the north. Sabi niya, I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. So he begs to be he must be somewhere below. When I say I will ascend to the second floor, because I'm in the first floor. Amen. I will ascend to there. Na klasen na babaka. So that is to say, we have to understand. Contrary to popular belief, hindi siya choir director sa langit for goodness sake. Magawa lang ng mga myth po yun. But if you gawa ng mga kwentong barbero na mga preachers, mga kapatid. Pero if you look at the Bible, he locate. He was located on earth. He was assigned. He was a creature on earth po mga kapatid. Although may access po sila sa glory ng pagnan pag pababa akyat po sila. Kasi perfect time. Parang ganon din yun sa Eternity future po mga kapatid na makikita natin. 
sa future. Amen. So, but before his fall, he was perfect in his way until iniquity was found in him. And what is that iniquity? A desire to be like the Most High God. He was not contented. He was not satisfied. He wants to possess the heaven and earth. So, Satan's want to possess wanted more than what God has given him. And it was his pride that caused his fall. Okay, the Bible says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? So he, he attempted to revolt. He attempted to revolt. Umakyat po doon. Amen. But he was never successful. He was never successful. And he became Satan. He became the devil po mga kapatid. Amen. Since his fall, Satan's plan po mga kapatid has been to take control of all creation. That's his plan. He wants to take, take control of his creation. Then he led that rebellion. So we see the rebellion happen in heaven. He led that rebellion in heaven and many angels followed him. You see that in Revelation 12.9, one third of the, the stars of heaven followed him. Pag sinabi mong stars po mga kapatid, these are personality, these are angels. Nagigita po natin. So one third of the stars of heaven followed him. Kaya if makikita mo sa Job po mga kapatid, nako, may, meron po siyang mga kasama. No? And, uh, the sons of God. And God declared the heavens, mga kapatid, as i-discuss ko last ta next time, na talagang because of that rebellion, it was populated yung second heaven, yung heavenly places na tinatawag po natin kung saan the abode natin sa future. But this is filled with doon po nakalagay po ang mga, kaya nga, he's the prince of the power of the air. And it resulted the earth into ruin. And it is discussed ko last time, second part, that's a rebellion. At na-destroy po yung earth po mga kapatid and covered with darkness. Kaya pagpasok mo sa Genesis 1-2, and the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. So, uh, work time na po tayo po mga kapatid so we could not go go on John but let's let's just remember that God from the beginning created two places heaven and earth and he put a creature there and everyone everything is in harmony everything is in perfect in perfect in perfect state not until one creature who he did not submit okay to the plan of God and to the purpose of God and that is Lucifer and he committed a, a gruesome sin. Amen. And a gruesome sin po mga kapatid, that, that, that caused his fall. That caused him to lose everything. He led a rebellion. And led one third of angels. Mga kapatid. So we'll stop there. At mapatuloy po natin yan next week. Sa next Tuesday. Bukas iba ang topic po natin. We will look at Lucifer's rebellion, Lucifer then became Satan. He became now the serpent. He became now the dragon po mga kapatid. So yun po ang makikita po natin. And uh, I'll, I'll tell you also the, 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 the account po mga kapatid in, in a story form. And uh, pag-usapan natin yan next time. So at least naka-move on na tayo sa eternity past sa eternal purpose at nandito na tayo sa creation at ang creation ng heaven and earth at dito tayo sa time at yung rebellion na nangyayari sa langit so thank you thank God sa opportunity ngayong umaga salamat sa bawat isa na nagtiis nagstay po diyan sa Facebook salamat po at uh, you are too many na ma ma uh, locate ko mahanap ko po mga kapatid kung sino nandito but praise God we're joined with brother uh, with Pastor Jonathan, Brother Isikil, Brother Joseph, and lahat.